This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Today I'm going to talk about bananas, regenerative farm system here. <clears throat> We're basically a, more or less a closed loop system that relies on animal manures and plant life and uh, other forms of life for our fertility. <clears throat> uh, as we know that everything's connected from through the water and air, it's the web of life. And the nutrients that are in excess will, nature will provide a plant that uptakes those nutrients and redistributes them to other plants that work off the fertility that the <clears throat> uh, nitrogen fixing plant is uh, harvesting, <clears throat> collecting. So I found that planting plants in the base of other plants, like this tree is a great place to plant um, a cha-cha tree seeds. Uh, I was just looking at the cuttings, or not cuttings, the seeds. Yeah, they were the cuttings of the the, the uh, mulberries that I did in my big banana patch. And um, all right, rat lady. Um, I did the cuttings in some, what most people would consider a weed. And uh, it's like the biggest one by far. My biggest, healthiest one, I'll show it to you. So I'm gonna go check on the bananas and, sh and um, show you what I do. So I have these bananas and uh, when they get a certain size, like this size, I stop taking the pups off of them. But until they get that size, I remove all the pups and plant them. And I try to do it as small as possible. So I'll leave this pup and that will fruit. Um, here's a prime example. The main one, this is the one that flowered and fruited this winter, and then the pup. We kind of had us all remove these two, three, looks like four. I'll remove four, four pups off here and just leave these two. So I've already done, planted about eight. I've got like, or seven. I've got like, I would probably remove this pup off this tree because it's not that big of a tree, so. And plant it. So I've, I've planted in the last two years more than 150. Um, and then I already had a bunch, like 30 probably. So I want to get up to about 300. <laughs> Bananas, like this one, that pup I would remove. I'm going to remove. I just, I didn't see them. I don't see them all the time. I think next week the sugar apples will start to be uh, coming on, but they're not quite there yet. Um, So none of this stuff I water, none of these bananas, and kind of don't really do anything. I just plant them, I divide them and plant them, and drop some manure down next to them. I apply 50 pounds of manure that I collect from our miniature zebus and donkeys a day and redistribute it on 10 acres so that it works out to about, I forget how many pounds, but it's like, in nitrogen, it's like 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year is what we apply. <clears throat> I try to split it up. I think it's like 2,000 pounds per acre is what I apply. I forget. It's, you know, 50 pounds times 365 divided by 12. I'm not going to do it in my head because I get distracted. Can't function. I'm already a little tired from dividing bananas. This is where the majority of our bananas are. And I'm just blown away by Florida's ability to 
produce uh, so much abundance. Uh, fruit, fruit in this case, variety of fruits. This is cit our seed grown citrus, of course. And they just like, it's not just a little bit of fruit, it's a lot of fruit. And um, it just blows me away. These citrus are like that because the birds attack them. Um, on top, you could see they got the peck marks from the freaking birds. They didn't get all of them, but they got most of them. So our seed grown lemons, we're on our second generation of seed grown lemons that they kind of come true to seed, I've found. Um, which is the complete opposite of uh, what I've been told uh, or what the common knowledge is. They say that a third are like the parent and then two thirds are different or lesser or better quality. I, I just haven't seen that. I've been growing out a lot of lemon seeds, um, lots of them and planting them. And I, I just, I don't see that. But anyway, um, back to the bananas. So this was always like a really crappy, not good crap, bad crap area to grow plants in. It did good up there, but this was like a, this was all lawn for 57 years. And then I decided to do tropical fruit trees in here. So I've planted lots of stuff in here. This is where the mangoes have frozen for the last two years. Um, and I had, before that, I had sugar apples in here. And now I have atamoyas and bananas and um, mulberries. And I planted some Garcinia trees in here. Some lukes and some, or not some lukes, but some uh, achacha and some... Uh, MB. Here's a little curry tree. Um, it's planted, seed grown tree, planted right next to this weed. Because uh, I found that the plants that are planted with other stuff, the, the tree crops prosper. So, this is one of those cuttings that I did a couple months ago, just during the drought. No water, I think it was in May. It was dry as a bone here, and I did a bunch of cuttings in here. Not a lot of them take, but I've seen a couple, and I just noticed this one. I did a cutting in this plant. Everyone knows what this is. They like pull it out in Florida. Um, but cows like to eat it, and I did this cutting in here, and look at the size of it compared to the, you know, I'll show you another one that didn't have that the plants regenerate the soil um, so I just did a cutting of uh, mulberry right there and I put it in that weed uh, I know that planting achacha trees in that stuff grow great there's a pigeon pea in here too I forgot about some turmeric and some ginger I have three types of ginger in here um, it's finally getting good it's like Getting good. The plants regenerate the soil and you staying off of it. So yeah, I don't walk on any of this stuff and I don't remove stuff. I do remove pepper trees. Let me take that back. But they would probably do better if I left the pepper trees. But because they're so high maintenance for chop and drop for me, I don't like to leave them. So um, I take them out. I pull them out. Um, it's probably not, it's probably better to leave them. In fact, I know it is. But can't give up everything. People get so sidetracked and just think that regenerative farming is rotating cows on rotational pasture. And yeah, the cows are great, but you ought to try zebu manure. It's like incredible. And we got to kind of look at history for uh, our, our systems, our growing systems and what Eden was and um, kind of Put that together with uh, knowledge that we gain from molecular uh, sequencing of uh, all the stuff, the life that's in the soil and on the soil, above the soil, in the plants. So we got to kind of incorporate that in there. And nowhere in Eden is there a picture of uh, just a few plants or one one solid plant uh, or.
anything like that. They do incorporate the zebu into the pictures of uh, a, a, a agrarian paradise. So um, using cows, I think is the only way to do it. But if you're like warming your cows and feeding them grain or GMO hay, it's probably not the same thing. Given a mineral blocks even can throw the system off. <clears throat> it's got to be able to self-sustain. So all these bananas just grow on their own and they all will fruit, guaranteed. Um, I usually had divided them at the end of summer and because the weather's cooler, but I'm now dividing them as I see them because it's that way I don't have so many to do all at once because it can be overwhelming. But we're getting there. We're getting up to 350, uh, th yeah, 350 bananas. <clears throat> People want to, like, um, figure everything out because they think that they can, um, they can improve or figure out why or have an answer of why why stuff is growing and how, why and and ways to like speed it up and make it um make it uh their their gardens prosper and um a lot of those people that do the studies and stuff i've never seen them uh show their plants and um It's really not complicated. Uh, nature does the work, and if we like apply manure and manageable amounts, not huge giant piles of compost, I don't think that that's healthy. I think small piles of compost, low small piles of compost, like daily 50 pounds dropped everywhere. Uh, is far superior than uh, any uh, thermophilic compost that people say they make that they need to make. It's just a, it's just a controlled soil system. Is all that is. You got to kind of like leave the the compost where it's at and don't disturb it. <clears throat> and eventually, it'll be good potting soil without any help from me. I don't know. People try to make it more complicated than it is, and then they have all these things that we've all heard, like remove the plants from around the trees, which is totally... You can't get a, uh, a tree to grow uh, in a dry farm system if you do that, and then, or else they like mulch everything with wood chips. Okay, the water needs to move through the soil. We are 98% water. We should be able to poke our fingers or our arms into the soil. That's the ideal soil. You can't do that with wood chips. Here's one of those little bananas I just planted. Just divided. Gotta get them in here. <clears throat> can't really do it in the weeds either because they're so... Uh, thick um, the grass but I know that the the grass collects moisture and puts it into the soil whereas the wood chips yeah they can collect moisture but they impede the, so the water from going into the into the soil it's everything in moderation I'm not saying wood chips are bad I use them every day in my my compost that I drop off pine shavings every day small amounts but I do it every day and it turns into 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre with the manure <clears throat> very small amounts so anywhere that this stuff grows this uh, mallow this is a super uh, uh, nitrogen accumulator you know you have excess nitrogen and this is a nitrogen fixing tree so of course it's going to 
<clears throat> prosper under there. So people have been like coming by and buying me out of uh, pretty much everything. Um, I meet such interesting, smart people, uh, all wanting to do or doing the same thing. Um, need to divide these things. I always like a fruit tree where you get multiple crops off of it. Um, so they've been coming by and buying stuff, and I know that people want um, sugar apple, um, sugar apple seeds and sugar apples. Uh, I think like in, I don't know, a week. I'll do a video when they're ready. Uh, it's just not quite ready yet. The cashews are just, they're the demand. And I mean, I'm like, having trouble getting the ones that I need because people want them so much. Um, which is great because they're a super crop for Florida, like citrus, like mangoes, like bananas, like cacao. And you don't even have to water the stuff. Don't really need to know anything. I don't think you do. Well, just apply a little manure. <clears throat> and learn by watching and plant some seeds. You gotta plant the plants. That's really the most important thing. <clears throat> Let go of all the previous information that you probably think you know, like the plants will compete with your tree. Um, not here in Florida, probably not anywhere for that matter. Um, this is a banana I just divided. No pups on any of these. This one needs one. It's getting kind of big. Um, I have some more. I did 10. I got two more to plant, three more to plant. Um, I'm gonna do that. It's supposed to rain today, which is good. Look at this cacao, uh, dry farm cacao in Florida. and. I, I, I still am blown away by that. The, the, the potential of Florida becoming Eden is just <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's possible, but the more we uh, pollute it and um, destroy the web of life, the air and the water, the less of our chance of actually attaining Eden slips further and further away. So People need to get on board, stop polluting, stop applying nitrogens. You don't need any of that fertilizer stuff here in Florida. Um, <clears throat> I mean, food crops and growing pollutants, uh, obviously you're gonna eat the food, the pollutants. <laughs> like, people are okay with that though. It's just, I don't know, there's a lot of things that seem very strange to me. I don't really get it. I think it's because of the pollution where they think that that's okay. <clears throat> They're unable to connect the dots that the pollution is probably going to cause disease in them eventually and age them prematurely. Oh, there's one. Okay, I got some more to d divide. Anyway, this is me ranting about bananas and regenerative farm systems and how easy it is here in Florida. Everyone can do it. It's free basically, other than the plants. This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Have a good day.